Got more NFL news breaking out for you today, so let's jump into this. What is up, Finn fans and football fans? Uh, I feel like this isn't just predicated mostly towards the Miami Dolphins, but to NFL in a whole. But hey to everyone that is watching this video. If you can tell by the title of the video, there was some breaking news today. Earlier today, I was at work, a ton of breaking news about the supplemental draft and about the preseason. Uh, but before we jump into this real quick, I want to shout out Roberto. Uh, rocking some uh, DDW merch in the, the great wilderness of Alaska. And uh, looking good. And uh, I'm jealous of all that uh, quiet and distance you got going on in there. But... Let's jump into the news and let's jump into what broke today. So first things first, there will be no NFL supplemental draft this year. And for people who are wondering what the flip-flop is an NFL supplemental draft, essentially if the, a player uh, was barred or not invited to the combine or the draft or wasn't part of the draft process, they have the option to join the supplemental draft. Essentially, in a nutshell, it says the NFL supplemental draft allows teams to select players who, for one reason or another, were barred from entering the regular draft in the spring. And the way it works is... When a team uses their supplemental draft pick on a player, they now lose that supplemental draft pick or they lose that draft pick in the following draft. So say the Miami Dolphins use their fourth round draft pick in this year's supplemental draft on whatever, like a, just a guard, right? In 2021, they lose that fourth round uh, draft pick because they used it for the supplemental draft. So that is how that works, right? Speaking of supplemental drafts, I wanted to quickly address some draft picks that came out of the supplemental draft uh, just to give you guys an idea of, yeah, the supplemental draft is saying supplemental so many times. It's just the word starting to sound weird to me. Yes, the supplemental draft isn't the high priced, high almighty uh, draft, but there were some players, some decent players that came out of the supplemental draft. In 2011, the Oakland Raiders selected, and it was Oakland, so don't correct me, uh, Terrell Pryor. Uh, in 2012, the Browns used their second round pick on Josh Gordon, again, which means in 2013, they didn't have a second round pick. Other supplemental drafts, uh, the Browns in 1985 uh, took Bernie Kosar, the Eagles 1987 took Chris Carter, the Broncos 1988 took Bobby Humphrey, Jets in uh, 1990, Roy uh, Moore, 1998, the Chargers took Jamal Williams, and in 2006, the Bengals took Ahmed Brooks. Those are just some names, some high price, especially, you know, Chris Carter, Bernie Kosar, Josh Gordon, uh, some high name players that were taken in the supplemental draft. Now, the, speaking of the supplement, so supplemental draft, again, can't say things anymore. It made me think about the season, right? Will there be a uh, college season? Will college football happen this season? I know we're all hoping and praying and banking on the NFL to have a season. Again, I will talk about preseason after I talk about this little tidbit. What if there is no college season? Because, and again, if the colleges are closed, pretty much the football teams are going to be closed. What if there's no college season? What then happens to the 2020 NFL draft, 2021 NFL draft, because then some of these top, you know, there's already rankings out there with top uh, uh, players coming into the draft in 2021. You know, we have, you know, the quarterbacks, the offensive linemen. I'm not going to go into great detail on names, but what if there is no college season? Well, some of these, you know, high price top drafted stars stay in college for an extra year just so they can play and show that they're better. How will that all pan out? Will teams just draft players off of their 2019 uh, tape? But again, we've seen players, Justin Herbert, some other players who did well the year before and then kind of fell off. We've seen a ton of players, especially players that got drafted this year and quarterbacks and in past drafts that have played really good one year. They decided to go back for another year, didn't play great, and it severely hurt their draft stock. So I'm wondering how that's going to pan out and how that's going to affect the 2021 draft if there is no college season. It's just something I was pondering while I was talking about the supplemental draft with myself uh, while taking my notes. And I thought I'd throw that at you and get your guys' opinion on that. And then the thing that everyone probably wants to know about, because it's probably the title of this video, is the NFL is in talks. It hasn't been confirmed yet. It hasn't happened yet. But they're in talks 
of cutting the first and fourth preseason game. Now, as of you watching this, I am uploading this late uh, Thursday, uh, Wednesday night, so you're probably going to get this 11.30 midnight uh, Wednesday night, but you might be watching this Thursday during the day if you work. You're probably sleeping by now, so you're watching this, and it might already have been announced or not announced. But essentially, this is what's happening. NFL wants to cut the four, first and fourth preseason game. Just have two preseason games. Give the teams more time to practice to get ready for the season. You give a nice big fat space in between the first, uh, in between the first and last preseason game. Normally, the first preseason game you don't really have a lot of starters playing. The fourth preseason game you never have any starters really ever playing unless your team is struggling or your head coach is like, "Wow, you guys are sucking. You're going to play some fourth preseason game on me." Normally, the fourth preseason game is more to uh, accommodate these younger players trying to make the team also they are adding more room on the rosters so it gives these players that normally would have to fight to make the team on the fourth preseason game a little bit better of a chance to make the team because the roster is a little bit bigger because of what's going on so again the announcement's going to happen tomorrow but again if you're watching this on thursday the announcement's probably going to happen today and all that jazz but i'm talking about it now so i'm not going to make a video tomorrow if they announce it if they don't announce it then don't listen to what I have to say in this video. So essentially week one would start August 20th to the 24th. And week two would start August 27th to the 31st. The first kickoff game is the 10th. So you got a big chunk in between. You got about 10, 10 days between the last preseason game uh, in this situation with the first and the fourth being cut and the kickoff. And you got a big chunk from July 28th start of the training camp to uh august 20th you got a little less than a month till the first preseason game again because normally we have otas mini camp rookie training camp all that stuff to get you situated you get a break you get training camp so you got a lot more time before the first kickoff they're giving the nfl and these players about a month like i said a little less than a month until the first preseason game but here is the gist, right? What they want to do is have one of your preseason games be away, one of your preseason games being home. That's the plan, right? We'll give you two preseason games, one away, one at home. For every team, for all 32 teams, you get one away, one home. Here's the problem. For the B Dolphins, the Bucks, and the Bills, week two and three of the preseason is their home games. They have back-to-back -back home games. For the Dolphins, it was at Atlanta, home, home, and then away. Same thing with the Bucks and the Bills. Starts, you know, home. Those two games are home games for them. And then for the Chiefs, the Panthers, the Vikings, and the Redskins, the second and third preseason game is away for them. Both of them. So now these teams that were initially going to face these, uh, the you know, the Chiefs, the Panthers, and the Vikings, and the Skins at their stadium on week two or week three, they're going to have to switch it. And again, it's going to take a lot of rescheduling and a lot of work and manpower to happen. But again, the reason why this hasn't been announced and the reason why this is just, you know, essentially what the NFL wants to do is because the NFLPA has not signed off on this. The, the union for the players has not signed off on this. And it, and it has been said that some in the union don't want to play a preseason game at all. They want no preseason games, and they're very weary and uh, would think it was smart to not play preseason at all. So there's a lot of news coming out because, like I said, July's here, and normally this is around the time that players are, you know, they got a, you know, about a month off. They're resting, getting ready for training camp at the end of July. Then once you hit training camp, you can hit your with the feet, ground running, go you got training camp preseason season it's like boom 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 real quick because like i said normally it's the end of july i think with uh without you know the mix up and without all that stuff miami dolphins would start their uh training camp july 25th instead of the 28th so you got the 25th and then you got the 14th of august is the first preseason game boom boom and then you got four preseason games start of the season it's real quick so we'll see what happens but like i said no nfl supplemental draft and they're trying to cut the first and fourth preseason game. Comment below. I want to know what you guys think. Do you think they should play any preseason games? Do you think that the cutting of the first and the fourth is smart? And also, how are they going to address the teams that have both both of those games away and home? 
Also, what do you think of the supplemental draft being cut? Do you think it really matters? I gave you some names that of people who got drafted in the supplemental draft. Also, I want to know what you guys think. If there's no college season this year, how is that going to affect the 2021 draft? I'm very interested to see what you guys have to say, and I'm going to get to one of you guys' comments of the day. Now, this comment comes from Boot Sniff, and I took this one off of Twitter. And he said, comment of the day, Baker and McMillan are two homegrown linebackers. What do they need to do to reinvigorate this defense? It's a very good question. First off, I think that this defense is getting a reinvigoration with the injection of new talent when it comes to Agba, Lawson, Kyle Van Noy, um, Igbenogany, Jones, you know, the other Jones, you know, Hall, Roberts, you know, I think that adding these players, you know, um, Davis, adding these players are giving that, okay, we got some talent on this team, but when it comes to Raekwon uh, McMillan and Baker, right, Jerome Baker, Baker needs to continue to play at the speed he's playing at, but have a little bit more control. And what I mean by that is you'll notice if you go back and watch some of his film last year, he would overshoot sometimes because he was just gun ho trying to get in there and getting after him. So I think he needs to just reel it in and, and you know work on that. Whereas McMillan, great thumper, great run stopper. But when it comes to the pass defense, he needs to work on that doesn't have necessarily the top end speed to cover some of these tight ends and stuff. And that's where Baker comes in. But Baker is very good at blitzing. So it's like, but then again, they added such great talent. And Ginkle, Roberts, Hall, Van Noy. They added very good talent at this linebacker core that if McMillan can't step up and be able to not just be a running linebacker, this is his contract year. It's gonna, the, he needs to work on that to be able to, you know, sustain success and stay on the team but i would like to re-sign baker and i'd like to re-sign mcmillan mcmillan's contract's up before baker he got drafted a year before him but uh i hope that answers your question boot sniff and thank you for the comment I mean, like usual guys always comment below if you want to be part of the comment of the day it makes it easier if you put comment of the day it doesn't have to be a question it could be a statement uh either or but if you want to be part of the comment of the day you want me to pick you for comment of the day let me know by saying comment of the day or c-o-d c-o-t-d but that's the video I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, it's a nice little quick short one. Uh, I just like to give you guys the news as it breaks. But obviously, this broke like around 4 o'clock. And I was at work. And then I had to come home and take care of other things. Again, I, like I said, I'm in the process of doing a lot of changes in my life. I'm keeping you guys updated. But as soon as it, everything gets official, I'm going to let you guys know if you care. But be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, the usual spiel. I'm always on Twitter. I'm always breaking news. All this stuff broke. If you guys didn't see the Miami Dolphins hype video, please go on their Twitter. Check out my Twitter. I retweeted it. The hype video just, oh, it gets you ready for this season. So be sure to check that out. Also, fan to fan Network. Like I said, this Saturday, the website's uh, uh, going to be announced. Huge, huge collaboration with all 32 YouTubers for NFL teams. We're going to have a Twitch channel, which, again, is always linked below. So be sure to keep your ears out of that. I'll let you know more after Saturday. Also, I started my own Twitch. Like I said, uh, once everything gets situated, I got more time. I'm going to start Twitch streaming, playing Madden and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that stuff, twitch.tv slash Dougley Duron. Go check me out and follow me there. Um, check out the BitBoys, another gaming channel that I'm a part of. Love it. Put my heart's my heart in it, my blood, sweat, and tears. But other than that, give this video a thumbs up. You like when I give you the news. If it's not about the Miami Dolphins, but about the NFL in a whole, you enjoy this stuff. So you giving the thumbs up, you shouting it out, you sharing the video. Let's me know that you like this stuff. A lot of you guys are telling me that you go into um, different like Facebook pages and stuff and you share my channel and you shout it out. And I greatly, greatly appreciate that. Sometimes I see you guys doing it. And you don't notice, but I give you a thumbs up and, and I and I shout you out in the in the little shout out because I've seen some pages where people are like, "Hey, who are good uh, dolphin people to follow?" And you're like, "Dougly Durong." Boop. I notice. I know who you are, and I appreciate the heck out of you. So, like I said, give this video a thumbs up. Check out dolphinstalk.com. Great dolphin website. Ton of dolphin content over there. Hit that subscribe button. Like I said, I got a ton of videos planned. We got the Cam Newton video coming out Friday, or for you watching this on Thursday tomorrow. Um, Got a ton planned. I wrote down literally another four videos that I got planned for you guys. I will entertain you guys until the end of time. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell so you know when the videos come live. And when I go live, which is going to happen next Saturday, not this weekend, but the weekend after I will be live Saturday 1 p.m. But other than that, I'll see you guys either Friday or tomorrow for you. 
But like usual, stay classy. Fins up.